Hey, greetings friends, Jacques Howard here. I'm on location in Western Pennsylvania, um, hanging out near Pittsburgh. Specifically right now, I'm in Somerset, and I'm fortunate enough to be coming to you via WYMG 1300 and WPHY Channel 25, covering locations from Mercer County, New Jersey, through Camden, Philadelphia County, and then also into Wilmington, Delaware. So, Keep your eyes open. I'll be popping in soon as we get on the road and share more about what Jacques Reach is. Recreation, environment, art, civics, and health. And today, I'm so excited. I'm kind of giddy. Um, I am sitting with legendary golf architect, Bill Amick. William Bill Amick. Bill, thanks there for some of your time. Right. I appreciate um, you opening up your home through, through your daughter and your son, your son-in-law, or daughter-in-law and your son-in-law. Mm -hmm. Or daughter-in-law and your son, sorry, should I say. I told you I'm a little giddy. <laughs> so, um, after meeting your daughter-in-law, Cindy, and talking about plant-based diets and nutrition and health, um, she mentioned to me about golf. And I've been telling folks about I've got this appreciation for the game of golf. Good. Um, it was introduced to me as, as, as a I young like person. You. <laughs> yeah, right off the jump. I was introduced to the game of golf by one of my uncles. Um, I'm, I don't consider myself to be very good at the game, but I really like the game. And I like all aspects of it. Not only the playing of it, but the camaraderie. And also the golf course design. Because early on I learned that golf courses are a sanctuary. Not only for the people who play there, but also for a lot of the animals that are on the courses, um, the birds, the wildlife, etc. especially when the course isn't being occupied by humans. So with that, Cindy said, you don't have any idea who my father-in-law is. And I said, no, why would I? I just met you, etc." And she said, Bill Amick. And I'm like, wait, I'm thinking, I'm like, golf? And she's like, that's my father-in-law. <laughs> so um, with that being said, I had a chance to start doing some research Digging deeper on you. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. All good stuff, though. Digging deeper and found out that we actually have a mutual friend. Um, Pat Lindsay Harvey uh, yeah. wanted me to tell you hello. Yeah. Um, and she said that you are a wonderful man. Um, your energy was fantastic. I think her exact words were that you are a lovely and kind man, is what she said. That's not bad. <laughs> no, but, no, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. And um, she said that you had assisted her nonprofit golf organization, EDU Sports Academy, um, with uh, some drawings for a potential uh, training site or a potential um, just something to do with golfing. And I was like, well, now this is all coming full circle. Like, I just met this guy through Cindy, who I just met through another organization. And now Pat knows him as well. And I started looking up your courses. And I'm like, <laughs> this is really amazing. So when it was, I was given the opportunity to sit and talk with you, um, I said, absolutely, I have to, um, for posterity reasons as well. It's important for more people to know the work that you've done um, and how you've connected with, through your life, with this game. And I said, well, man, maybe there's some way that I can kind of, you know, get a little tidbit from you that I can share on and it can further this game of golf that I love so much. So earlier you were talking about um, how you started doing golf course architecture. And, of course, you made a joke about it. You said, well, <laughs> it, it, it was quite an incident for me. I, I, had, uh, I was a junior in college, had no real idea what. I, I was a pretty good local amateur. And uh, uh, I had the flu. And I was in the college infirmary with 102 degree temperature. And I, to, to pass the time, I picked up this New Yorker magazine. And in it, it had an article about Robert Trent Jones, who was, who still is a famous guy. He, he's deceased now, but, mm -hmm. but uh, and so I read that article with a 102 degree temperature, and I decided either because of that or, or despite that, I, that's what I wanted to do. And, it's gone. I've gone from there. It, it has been a very successful career. Um, one of the latest articles I had written was that you had over a 50-year career in golf course architecture. Actually, it's, it's over 60 years. Oh, see? See? <laughs> <laughs> right. 
All right, so over 60 years yes. of this game has been a part of your life and, and all phases of the been, architect. As my uh, late wife said, it was it pretty much uh, too much of my life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, but that, that, that's, that's, that's interesting, and I appreciate you, know, you touching, touching on that. How much but I, I wanted to add, she, on the uh, uh, nice trips that I took, which were, I, I took all kinds of trips, but she went to Istanbul, she went to Paris, she went to London w with me, or uh, you're right, and so she, she didn't complain about those. Oh yeah, of course not. Now, um, uh, so with the golf course architecture, um, I'm not sure, was there like an idea when you were a young person that this could be a job, or did someone introduce it to you? Well, uh, from this magazine article about Robert Trent Jones, I, I had a dream. I, I, I knew I was going to, at that time, all able-bodied young men had to go in service, so I knew I had that ahead of me. But anyway, uh, I, I latched on from that article mm -hmm. to the idea, and I, step by step, long, a rather long process, I trained with a, with a uh, existing golf course architect in Indianapolis, Indiana, and uh, went on from there. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sure you, whenever you have had a chance to talk about the courses that you've worked on and you've designed, uh, people say, are there any particular ones that are favorites to you? And I'm going to go a little bit further and not say that, that no, no, they're all your babies, so to speak, <laughs> yeah. but, but is there anything in particular about any of the courses that stands out now that you're older in life um, that stands out? Well, of course, I, I still receive some attention about some of the, the more uh, uh, noted, like uh, Killarne in, in Tallahassee, Florida, where there were over 20 PGA tournaments, uh, and Pensacola, Perdido Bay, uh, 10 PGA tournaments, uh, a course in Naples. And, and so uh, that's naturally what I've heard most about. But, but And they were important and they are satisfactory, but uh, again, uh, I, uh, as, as any specialist in any field, you concentrate on what you're doing at the moment. You try to do the best you possibly can, and then you do move on to, to another. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you've also had success, like, out of the country. Yes. And um, can you just talk about some of those processes and how that took place? Well, uh, like any field, gradually, as I did more courses here in the United States, and the United States being a leader in development of new courses uh, uh, 20, 30, 40 years, 40 years ago, so my reputation mm -hmm. kind of uh, uh, got me to, in Europe, Mm -hmm. in several countries, uh, Italy, uh, Germany, uh, the Netherlands, and, uh, and other places that uh, were getting into the golf course field. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I'm sure some folks, um, just like any other sport, always think about the athlete who's on television. Like they're thinking who's hitting the shots, et cetera, who's playing. But this is, has been able to be a career for you yes. outside of a being very, a player. A very good one. Yeah, so <laughs> can, can you just touch a little bit on how this is a much bigger um, industry and opportunity for young folks to consider? Oh, it, it, uh, in, um, I was of the post-World War II era. That's when I was in college. And, and it, golf really began to grow, first mainly in the United States, or primarily, in, but it, it spread the world over now. So that uh, uh, you know, there, there are courses being built, not as many, but uh, in many continents and countries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, as you know, you you think about where golf is now. Like like you said, there's still courses there, courses being built all over the country. And I'm sure there's some uh, more ideas of different design techniques in in golf than the more traditional courses. Um, is there anything that like is in your ear about the future of golf courses? I think and believe and I have for quite a while, and, and other people that there ought to be more what's called executive golf courses mm -hmm. and par three courses that are smaller, faster to play, 
less fees, uh, uh, more interesting for the beginner and, and um, not so highly skilled. So I, I see that as the potential. Uh, not that it, they're going to replace you know, St. Andrews or all the other courses, but, but uh, I see the uh, growth of an opportunity. Uh, just like in your uh, own Trenton area, uh, I don't believe there are any small courses, but I, I think there could be, should be, <laughs> ideally would be. Like, like you're a man of my own heart. So, yeah, so um, I'm fortunate enough to live in Mercer County, New Jersey. So we have five muni courses, um, but they're all championship courses, 18 holes. They're of yes. different lengths. But I agree with what Bill's saying. It's, it would be nice to have some uh, executive courses, some shorter courses, maybe some par three courses. And I, I also want you to touch on, um, I've heard that, especially out west, they're developing courses now with more tee boxes. Instead of the traditional um, colored like red, white, blue, black for championships or whatever, they're now having multiple tee boxes uh, in different angles so that you can play the hole from different approaches. Well, of course, that, that's been, <laughs> uh, some of the insiders have known about that for quite a while. And it's become more popular, more accepted to, to have interesting angles and not only distance. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Now, um, with that being said, do you foresee, um, uh, are, are there any younger architects that, that you're in touch with that are, you know, doing some things that are interesting to you? Uh, <laughs> we have a, a, a large field of golf course architects. Not so much when I started, fortunately for me, mm -hmm. but uh, no, we have, and we have an American Society of Golf Course Architects. And we've, it, it's grown in size and numbers, including uh, a lot of younger, and it, it's ideal. Mm -hmm, great. And I'm glad that you mentioned uh, the Association of the Society for Golf Course Architects, because you have also been a recipient of one of their Distinguished Fellows Awards. So congratulations on that. Um, and I'm sure there's a bunch of them, but that was one of the ones that you know, stood out to me, your peers. Um, we're recognizing you for the work that you have had done. I, I appreciated that very much. Mm -hmm. One thing I want to add about your area, mm -hmm. Trenton, my brother was <laughs> editor, editor of the your editorial section of the Trenton Times for many years. He's retired now, but but uh, so that's uh, that not one thing brought me to your area. A number of times, he still he and his wife and son still live there in in Ewing Township. Yes. If that's a, 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 an area. So, so I I came to Trenton quite a few times to see them and and also the, this uh, smaller courses that you mentioned. Right. Awesome. Well, you know, Bill, I am going to make sure, and I'm recording this. So I'm going to make sure that I see your brother and that I get this to him so he can see it and I'm sure we could probably talk quite a bit about some of his experiences with the well, newspaper. Uh, unfortunately at age of 94 he's not in the, the best of emotional uh, <laughs> memory. Okay. No, uh, the, he, uh, he, he was a great writer, uh, editor and so uh, I, I welcome you to contact he and his wife uh, and uh, I'm, I'm sure he'll welcome me, but uh, uh, I, I'm only 92, so uh, <laughs> I know what he uh, what he has gone through. <laughs> I've experienced some of that myself. Gotcha. Well, I appreciate your hospitality, and I appreciate you um, for being candid with me and sharing it. It's been fantastic to spend well, some time with you. Well, thank you, and you stick with your goals. Yeah, I will. I'm a, I'm a bad 20. Hey, give me your hand here, Bill. Thank you so much. I appreciate yes. it. All right, Bill. Thank okay. you so much. Here you have it, folks. Uh, Bill Amick here, Sunset, Pennsylvania. Um, I'm going to do what I can to make sure that I continue to grow the game of golf, not only with the folks who are in my network, but also to make sure they get a chance to meet this guy who I got a chance to meet. Thank, thank you, you so much, Bill. Remember, it's always about justice, peace, and humility. Mm -hmm.